Hey teachers, and welcome to Teach Blog Travel, or if you're in our Google Classroom crash course, welcome to the video about how to make a PDF editable. I'm Brittany, and I run the course, although it's not much running to do, I'm basically just uploading it, and then I'm here to support in whatever you need. Um, but there seems to be a big demand to know how to make a PDF with edit editable fields. So let's get started. To let you know what I use, I use pdfescape.com. It's a free website. You don't even need to sign up or have a subscription of any kind. You just type it into your address bar and then get started. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to walk you through the process of uploading and editing a PDF, giving it editable fields in PDF Escape. Okay, oh, we just had the infinity window there. <laughs> Sorry about that. So when you type in pdfescape.com into Windows, you're going to want to click on the option that says free online. That's what I find to be easiest because if you're using a different computer at work or school, or you know, if, you're, if it's someone else's computer at a library or something in the future, you can just go on there and you don't have to worry about it being installed to a certain computer. You have a few different options. You can either create a new PDF document entirely. You can upload a PDF that's been cre previously created to make it have editable fields. You can load one from the internet. So if you have a link and you want to edit that file, you can do that, or you can load one that you've previously worked with. Now, because it is a free program, it does have some limitations. You can't upload super huge or rich text files, so they have to be less than 10 megabytes and fewer than 100 pages. Now, you can upgrade if you'd like to $2.99 per month, and you don't have to worry about the size of your files. And if that's something you do often on a large scale, you might want to consider that. But I find that the free option suits me just fine. So I'm going to go to Upload PDF to PDF Escape, and honestly, that's probably the option that you'll use most often as well. You can either drag the document from the file folder on your computer to this space, or you can click Choose File and select where you have it downloaded. So I've already been working in this file, but I'm going to go ahead and just start again from where I was. And I am uploading a document that was sent to me by another teacher, so I'm kind of killing um, two birds with one stone. I'm showing you how to do it, and I'm helping her out. Okay, so once your document is loaded, you're going to see you have several options up here, up here, and here. So to show you what you can add into the pages. So you can add a live link, a picture, text. You can white things out, which is basically like redacting it. You can draw freehand, or you can add some fields. Now, form fields is really what you want to stick with if you want to make your, your document editable. So I'm going to click on that, and you'll see it has a drop-down menu with more options. So you can do a text paragraph, which allows more space for writing, a checkbox if you just want them to do a check, um, drop-down menu, reset button. There's really all kinds of things you can do, so the button. But I am going to just do text, because I think that is the easiest for what we're trying to do. I'm going to click Select, and I'm going to carefully hold down my left-click button and try to trace it. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect to be functional, obviously, but I do try to keep it within the lines just so that it looks neat. And then because this is math, I'm also going to um, put some space for them to write their work and explain it. So like there's an answer field, there's their space to explain, and you know, obviously not every kid is even gonna use all of this space. But I just like to have the option, you know how the saying goes, better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. There's not a circular field, so I'll just do a square one over that. Square one there. Answer field, number field. Answer, okay. And so I think you kind of see how this works. Now, if I was doing like a checklist, which I do make some of those for Teach Blog Travel, I would just select the checkbox and I would do the same exact thing with clicking and dragging. If you're doing like a reading comprehension test and you want them to be able to type it in or any kind of work with a, a long form and answer, it'd be the same thing. You'd probably want to check text paragraph instead of just the text box. But for all intents and purposes of math, you don't really usually need to do that. Okay, so this is two pages, but just for the sake of showing you how this works, we're going to pretend that I'm done. You have a couple of different options for how you can save it. You can just save it here in the program, or you can print it as is, or you can save and download. If you're going to want to upload this to Google Classroom later or otherwise type inside of it, you're going to want to save and download it as a PDF. Before you do that, just some preferences. If you want to choose the font 
or the size of the text that's going to be in the form fields, you can definitely do that before you save it. But we're just going to download it as is. So I'm going to click on the screen button. And it's automatically going to come up right here in my downloads. It should be saved in my downloads folder. I'm just going to open this so you can see what it looks like once it is edited. So see, I can type numbers in there. I'm just typing whatever. Um, and it looks like I didn't get it perfectly even, um, but that's okay. I just I don't think it has to be perfect. So what you can do is once they have filled in their answers and they're ready, you can just go to this button right here, print, and then save as a PDF. And then that'll save their answers on there. So make sure that you show them how to do that. I'll also be releasing a series of videos specifically for students. So if you want to have those, just be looking out for them. Make sure you are either already in the Google Classroom Crash Course so that you know when those come out or that you're subscribed to my YouTube channel or that you're subscribed to my email list on teachblogtravel.com so you can be made aware of when those things happen. So that is the basic gist of it, of how to make a PDF document editable, at least with basic form fields so that you can type in answers and show your work. Again, my name is Brittany. I hope that was helpful. Uh, and until next time.